Okay, I decided to make a video on um, the Lagrange interpolating polynomials uh, using MATLAB and the symbolic toolkit. It's a numerical method to find a polynomial function that goes to, through specific given points. So in the first example, I'll just quickly show how, how the program works. Then I'll just give an example or actually discuss the theory behind the Lagrange interpolating polynomial, how to do it. And then I'll go through the program. It's a very short program, uh, very easy to program, and surprisingly powerful to find these equations that will be otherwise quite difficult to work out by hand. So for the first example, you've got two points. Um, for this, La the Lagrange interpolating polynomial will be probably more difficult than using a simple point-slope formula. We use the y minus the point, the y in the point, um, with a slope, which is the difference in y divided by the difference in x, uh, times x minus the, the point, which is 5 in this case. So we should be getting a 6 minus x. If I run the program, you can see using the um, symbolic toolkit, we get the 6 minus x. And then I evaluate the function at a given point. So I, I put the point at uh, the x value at 3, and then we see the y at 3. So looking at the, the graph here, there's the two points that we were given. This is the, the um, first degree polynomial going through both points, it's a simple straight line. And then we evaluated the point at 3, which is also giving an answer of 3. So if I use the next example, we're going to be using four points. Um, let me just, just clear this. And then if I run that, you can see we get a third degree polynomial that is significantly more, um, more complex. So it's a very long polynomial, but we can simplify it. We can then plot, plot the polynomial going through the given four points. And then again, evaluate it at three. We get a, a value, a y value of minus 7.5. And then I just decided to see how this does with significantly more complex um, points, if I give that, let me just go to the next one. So I've created a bunch of x values, and then I'll first just use a sine function to create the y values. Um, and looking at the polynomial at the bottom, you can see it gets very, very complex, but it, it creates a very nice function that runs through the points. Again, they're evaluating our point at a specific value. And then to make it even more interesting, you can use sine x minus x to get this very interesting function there. But it runs through the points. There's our point that we evaluated there with a value. It's given in rational form. So first of all, let me just show you how to do this. Um, so I've got an example here. I got this from a YouTube video. I'll put a link in the description. So if you are given these four points, we want to create the polynomial that goes through them. So we're going to create four terms, each for each of the points. So for the first point, we'll just look at this, minus 2, minus 2. Um, this will be the y value at that point. And then we'll use the x values of the other points to create these terms. So we'll ignore the minus 2, the x value, the current x value, and then we'll use a symbolic x minus each of the other points. So x minus minus 1, x minus 0, x minus 4. And for the bottom terms, you'll use the actual current x, which is minus 2. This is the x value. And then minus all the other three points. So x minus minus 1, minus 2 minus 0, minus 2 minus 4. And you'll do this for the second point. Again, the y value, the symbolic x minus the remaining value, so it will ignore minus 1, so it will be x minus minus 2, x minus 0, x minus 4, and then you'll use the actual x value at the bottom, minus 1 plus 2, minus 1, minus 0, minus 1, minus 4, leaving out the current value, um, since that will give you a 0 in any case. And then after working out all these terms, we add them together to get a rather difficult polynomial but easy to evaluate. So if we decide to find the, the value at 
of the function at x equals 2. Then we replace all these x values with 2, and then we get this. So looking at the first one, um, we will have here 2 plus 1 is 3, which we find there. 2 minus 0 is 2 and so on. And then that is quite e easy to evaluate using a calculator and we get the value at that point with x equals 2. So we're going to use this example just to show how the program works. Hopefully it be will become clear. So for this I'll, I'll use the four points that I'm using in the example. I'll just clear this quickly. So we'll start off with nx equals 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the nx and to fill that up with each of the terms. So this will be the first nx I will create. And with the first loop, I'll create the first pair of terms. And I'll times the nx equals 1 with that. And then I'll multiply with this. Then I'll multiply with this. And at the end, we'll multiply with a y. And we'll use that nx term then to add to px or our polynomial. So px will be equal to 0 and each time after creating my, my term I'll add it to px to, to um, get the function or the polynomial that we'll use to graph the function and to evaluate specific points. So nx equals 1, px equals 0 and then the loop will use k equals 1 to whatever the length is of x. So we've got four points. It will go through this four times. We'll create four nx values that we add to px. So we're going to create one, two, three, four. We're going to run through that four times. All right. And then l will be equal to 1 to the length. So again, we'll go through this four times. But this time, if k is equal to l, we'll skip um, adding to the term because we don't want to add the current x value or subtract the current x value from the from itself basically so we, we don't want to go through this if we are at the current k or x value then we'll just say that the x that we're going to use is a, the symbolic x it's not going to be a value and then for the term we're going to create the current x or the, the symbolic x minus the remaining values. So we're going to not use the k value because that is the current x. We'll use it for the other one. So we'll go through this loop three times. So this will be the top term. For the bottom term, we want to use the current x value, the k for the point, minus the remaining x values. And then we'll take the top and bottom terms and multiply it with nx, which will initially be 1. And just looking at the example here, so we'll initially the nx will be 1. Then with the first iteration, we'll add x plus 1 minus 2 plus 1, which will be for this point. Then the second iteration, the third iteration, and then it will stop. So it won't go through it. The fourth time, it will not add anything to nx. All right. And after that, so we end the loop. Then we'll have to just multiply nx with y, the current y value for that point, and then we'll add the nx to the polynomial, which will initially be 1, and we'll add all four terms. But when we iterate again, we need to reset nx to 1 for the next term, so that we can start adding for the second one until we get the 1, 2, 3, 4 nx values that we add to the polynomial and it will be in this form in the end. All right, after that it's done. Let me run this again. So this is what you're getting. You're going to get a very complex polynomial um, in symbolic form, which is very, very nice. But we can simplify it by simply saying px equals simplify px to get a significantly easier to manage third degree polynomial. Still complex, but obviously, given the points, um, that's how it will look. And then I'm just going to simply plot it. So all we do here is I say hold on so that we can add the points, the function, and the point that we're evaluating before it makes the graph. Um, here I'm plotting the points, the x, y points, y, i, the ones that we've been given. And I choose to make 
um, circles that are red. So looking at the graph again, that simply adds all these points to the graph. And then to plot our polynomial, you simply use fplot, the function px, from the, the minimum xi value to the maximum xi value. I just subtracted one and added one to, to increase the range a little bit. Um, and then I want it blue. That's very easy. And then to, to evaluate a specific point, you just choose a value. And then I use the subs command to say that y is equal to the polynomial where I replace the x with a specific value. In this case, I use the point 3, x is 3, and I get a y that is minus 7.5. So that is how the program works. It's a very easy to program, but actually very interesting, especially for more difficult points and values. Um, and I was actually surprised how easy it is to create this, this program and how nice it works for all these different points and functions. Okay.